Hello my lovelies and welcome back to Art of La Carte. Today I'm going to take a little break from drawing and painting and other such art things that I normally show on this channel and I'm going to do a little felt stuffed animal. So this pattern I did not come up with on my own. I purchased this pattern on Etsy. I'll leave a link to her store in the description box below. She has a ton of different patterns and I really wanted to test it out to see how they got put together and I loved this one because it has the option of uh, making the otter that's holding a baby or it can be holding a heart and I think I could even make some other things that the otter could be holding. So let's go ahead and try it out. So I printed out this pattern on my printer. It was color, but I didn't want to waste the color ink, so I just printed it in grayscale. And then I'm going to cut it out. Oh, not using these scissors. Those are fabric scissors. Warning, warning. Cut paper with fabric scissors? Oh my goodness. Cutting is kind of soothing and it's not, not a ton of pieces, like some projects I've done in the past. That was a lot of cutting. So I went ahead and cut out these pieces. I chose not to cut out the tiny little arms and legs and hair and chest for the baby otter. I'm gonna eyeball that. Same with the tuft of hair for the mommy and the little flower. I'm gonna, might do something different. I'm, I'm debating on that one. So we'll see what happens. If not, I can eyeball it or cut it out later. So I'm gonna put those to the side. And then this is kind of our chart to look at, but the instructions, the, the file that you download also comes with instructions. So I'm gonna take a peek at that. The next step is to choose out what color I want my otter. So I have this kind of um, reddish brown and then I have a deeper brown. And I was thinking this one at first, but uh, I think I like this one better, especially because it has like these kind of fun textures and it. it's not a solid color. I like that. And I think I would save this one more for a fox if I was doing that. So this says to cut this piece out two times. I've never tried to cut out fabric or felt in my silhouette. I wonder how that would work. Supposedly you can even cut out fabric in your Glowforge. I'm not that brave. I've seen the fire. Yeah. <laughs> If you're really clever, you can sometimes fold, double up your fabric and pin it and then cut it and it will cut two out. But I didn't think of that beforehand, so I'm just gonna cut it out twice. Another thing that you can do is trace around it if you don't wanna pin your pattern. So you can put this, put this on your felt. I'm gonna use brown so that it doesn't really show as much. And I'm just gonna go lightly around the pattern. And you just draw around the line, so that's even easier, I say. Just don't want to use a color that's going to show through. So that's why I, or if you use chalk, you can kind of wipe the chalk off. You know what's interesting is that I'm left-handed, and so I draw left-handed all the time. But I'm right-handed when it comes to scissors. I think it's because uh, there was, when I was a kid, there wasn't very many options for left-handed scissors. They were out there, but it was really rare that you would go someplace and they would have left-handed scissors. So I just had to learn how to cut left-handed. Um, I think that's interesting. I mean, I can cut with my left hand, but it feels really awkward and I don't think I can get a good cut. So I'm right-handed with scissors. Fun fact about me that you never knew. So we're going to build the front part of this otter first. And we're going to start off with stitching the, uh, the belly to the body. And also, if there's any spots I wanna smooth out, this is the time to do it. Just like with drawing, take your time, don't rush it because it's much easier to fix something or to cut a new piece out now than to get it sewn and go, Hilch. I didn't like that. I didn't have a lot of thread options, so I chose this one. I think it'll go fairly well. 
the pattern recommends a running stitch. They use running stitch, straight stitch, hidden stitch, blanket stitch, and an embroidery stitch. Um, and if you don't know how to make any of those stitches, the pattern actually shows you how to do them. So that's nice. So I'm using an, uh, a blunt needle. I don't know if that's the best choice. Maybe I should have gotten a, a regular sewing needle, but so I'm going to start from the back so it hides my stitch and I'm going to start down here. And I always seem to do this. I always give myself just just barely not enough thread. So I'm going to go ahead and close it off back here and start another get just a little bit more thread to finish it off. There we go. Looks a little messier on the back. That's why we don't look at the back. So next we're going to add in the embroidering for the eyebrows and we're going to put in the eyes, which I'm excited about. Pattern gives you a really cool trick to do this if you don't like to just guess. Um, so there's that if you're like, I don't want to try that. That looks scary. I have embroidery floss, but I don't have it in black yet. <laughs> This is why this is not a how to do this. This is how I do this video because a normal sane person would just go and get black embroidery floss. Not Choco. Now my fingers are getting all stained. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and embroider this on here. There we go. Cute enough little mouth. Now we're going to go ahead and put on these doll eyes. This is actually the first time I've ever used doll eyes before, so there's no instructions either. So <laughs> we'll figure this out together. It seems fairly simple. There's two parts to each eye. I think you poke it. Go, 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 go. There we go. That goes, I don't know if I put it the wrong way or not, but I would think that would that would help the fabric go around it a little bit better. So there's these two, her two little eyes. Perfect, just like that. There we go. He looks kind of creepy that way. So I think <laughs> I should have, I was too excited you guys. Alright, I put the eyes way too close into each other. They're probably supposed to go here and here. And so my little otter is a little... He's got a cute face. I need to give him a bit of a nose job. Just bring his nose down just a little bit. Yeah, much better. Some time has passed because my sister called and I was chatting with her. So we stitched on the ears and then I have been doing a blanket stitch all the way around and now I have a little hole right here and I am stuffing some fiber in there to fluff him up and I find that it's getting the right amount of stuffing in there and getting it into the place it needs to like down here in the tail it's kind of challenging so if you have a chopstick or something which I usually have chopsticks in here because I I eat a lot of chopstick stuff or the edge of a paintbrush and you kind of stuff it where it can like you know push out his cheeks a little bit more. I'm putting a little less right around the neck just so that it kind of concaves into that a little bit more on his tummy. Then I will blanket stitch the rest of this up. And again, if you don't know how to blanket stitch, it's in the pattern. And there we have his little, his little body done. So the only thing left I have to do is to sew his uh, four little paws. 
and uh, then put those on. A little sea otter would be done. Now, if I wanted to make this like a hangable ornament, I would have sewed a little loop in there. I decided not to. I'm gonna put a little, I cut out some extra little hair. I want it to be a little bit longer. Um, so I'm gonna stitch that on there as well. And I don't know, I might put something around by his ears. I don't know if I'll put a little, little tufts by his ears or something, I don't know. We'll figure that out. Uh, so cute. Okay, so I have his first little paw sewn up and I'm going to put a little bit of stuffing in here and this is where I want to have saved this fabric or this bit of felt because it's the same kind as this um, because as it stuffs in there, I don't want to see any of the white microfiber kind of poking out um, because it's such a tiny piece. So this, just in case one of my stitches is a little bit looser, um, you won't see it the white. There his arms are on and you can definitely see I stuffed this one a lot more than this one and the thread is a little too dark. I thought it would look nice as a border but I think if I do this again I will use a lighter thread so it won't show up as much. It's still pretty cute. And there he is! Oh my goodness he's almost finished. So I am not gonna do the baby. That makes my brain hurt to think of stitching and stuffing, all of that. So I'm going to make him, I think, a little seashell to hold, like a little scallop. If you guys play Animal Crossing, then yeah, you probably know who I'm thinking of. There we go. Oh my goodness, he is so adorable. He's covered in fluff. He has a ton of mistakes in him. But he's the first of his kind, and I adore him. He's so cute. I even love that his embroidery turned out a little bit green. I think it just kind of goes with the aesthetic of the piece. What do you guys think? <laughs> he's so cute. I feel like... I feel like I want to make him like a little kelp bed to sit in. A little kelp weed or something. I don't know. I have to think about that. Let me know. Should he have a little a little kelp kelp bed to sleep in? Or just leave him like, like this? Let me know in the comments. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly had a lot of fun. If you're interested in making some of your own little felted creatures that have never done it before, highly recommend checking out this shop. Granted, I will warn you that these pieces can be super tiny, so be patient with yourself um, and use a sharp needle. Don't use a uh, blunt needle like I did. I think that would probably have fixed a lot of the problems that I had with the small pieces. So I, again, I'll leave a link to her Etsy shop in the description box below. This is not sponsored. I just um, really like her, like her work, so check it out. If you're not yet done crafting with me, I recommend you check out this video that I did of making a paper three-dimensional fox. That was fun. Uh, so you can hit that video and join me over there. And until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you in the next art video. Bye-bye!